Hey everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Stroik from Universal Rackets, and in this video, we are going to be talking about strategies and tactics of coming up from the baseline to the kitchen. We're going to be dialing in on how you can exceed and succeed up in the transition zone. Now, I feel like in pickleball, everyone's good at the kitchen, everyone's good at the baseline, but what separates different, different levels is people at the transition. Yes, and it's important that you are working this area with your partner as one unit. I feel like a lot of players, they struggle with coming up to the transition zone to the kitchen, mm -hmm. and it's not because their lack of skill, it's because of their lack of certain tactics and lack of certain strategies. Mm -hmm. For example, you were saying you were just playing a couple days ago in an open play, and your partner was staying back while you were coming up to the kitchen. Yes, and that creates a huge hole for your opponents to put the ball away. Or another big thing is a lot of players, they struggle with their hands because they end up popping the ball up because they're not in the proper position or they can't even get to the ball because they don't know how to approach the kitchen. Yeah. So if you stay tuned for this whole video, you're going to learn every single thing, tips, tricks, and tactics on how to successfully come up from the baseline to the kitchen and win more points. Now we're gonna give you an entire rundown on where you should be on the court at what time and how to position your paddle and your body with your partner so that you can win more points and become a more advanced player. And first, we're gonna start off with this angle showing the kitchen and the baseline. So here's the first thing that you don't wanna do, and this was a such a, I would say, light bulb tip, light bulb moment for myself. And you said you were playing with Hugh that one time and uh, that amazing pro that we all love, I completely forget her name, told us that you want to think that you're on a ladder instead of running through. So here's what would happen to me. I come from a tennis background or if you're super intense, you want to get up the kitchen and you're running with like fire. Ah. In tennis, you never want to be here. So people get confused if they've ever played tennis or heard about it before. Yeah, so you want to run through the ball. So here is, and make sure them in the camera, okay. here is what players do, okay? They're going to be going like this. They are at the baseline right now. They're up at the baseline like this. They're hitting their drop, right? And after they hit their drop or their drive, they're going to be sprinting up to the kitchen. Once again, this is what you don't want to do. And this is the reason why you struggle with getting up to the kitchen is because after you hit your drop or your drive, you're sprinting like you're in the Olympics up to the kitchen. Instead of doing that, Michelle, what do you want to do? You want to trust your drop or analyze how good your drop was and then it will tell you whether you should stay or you should go and you want to make sure that you stop while your opponent makes contact so what that means is you don't want to run through every single time that your opponent makes contact with the ball you want to make sure you set and stop your body I feel like this is a good time to take out your notes and your notepad to write this down because this is such great information and it's going to be a lot that we're going to be building off of that's going to get you to become a great transitional player. So again, when your opponent makes contact, you want to make sure that you set your body. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to run through the kitchen. Every no. single time that your opponent makes contact, you want to set. Okay, let's show them what it looks like when you run through. So I want you to think that you're on a ladder, okay? There's like a ladder here, here, here okay so every single time watch so i'm gonna hit my drop and then watch my opponent's gonna make contact i'm gonna set my opponent's gonna make contact i'm gonna set they're gonna make contact i'm gonna set and they're gonna make contact again and i'm gonna set that is how you want to move what you don't want to do is you don't want to do this watch i'm gonna hit my drive or my drop right and now it is so difficult to run forward and change direction rather than set and hit. You cannot effectively run straight forward and then your opponent goes down the line or in the middle and change direction. You don't have enough time. Pickleball is fast and time is a currency. And you'll just never be in the right positioning and your shots will be so erratic and inconsistent. Every single time. Yeah. So great drill is why don't you go back here okay. and what we're going to do is every single time you're going to make contact, what are you going to do? You're going to stop your body. Michelle's going to set. And she's going to hit. She's going to move up, set. She stops wherever she is. Set. Good. Every single time I make contact, Michelle's going to set her body and stop wherever she is until she gets up to the kitchen. I like to think you want to make your foundation. You want to set up shop. It's like you're creating your own campground. As you notice, like I mentioned before in the video, it's kind of like a ladder. You're moving up. You're moving up. You're moving up. The only time that you want to run through the ball is if your opponent floats a ball at you. And what I mean by that 
is if the ball looks like this, okay? So if the ball's high, it's just sitting up there, then she can move forward and hopefully hit it somewhere in the court. Can you do that again? So if the ball's high, then you can run through it and then you can go through and hopefully once again, hit it in the court. Other than that, you always want to set and hit. Now, it's easier to drill than do it while you're playing. It's easier said than done. So mm -hmm. that's why drilling is such a key thing. Yeah. Even if you don't have someone to drill with, you don't have a beautiful wife who hits every single ball in to, to drill with, you're just gonna go up here. You're gonna move up again here. You're gonna move up again here. Now, we talked about our movement. We talked about our footwork. Now let's talk about our paddle positioning. So why don't you go over there and you hit some balls to me? and I'll demonstrate. This is where I go wrong, and when I take time off of pickleball, I revert to this every single time, and I do not know why. Players, they don't have good hands, they can't get up to the kitchen because they're not in the proper position. And this has nothing to do with your skill. I am a 4-0 versus 5-0, 5-5, whatever, when I do this one thing. When I'm a 4-0, I'm running up to the kitchen like this. My paddle's down, right? And then I'm gonna hit the ball. When I'm running up to the kitchen, I'm gonna do this. My paddle's down and I'm gonna hit the ball and then she's gonna smash it in me. Instead of running with my paddle down, watch what I'm going to do. I'm gonna run with my paddle up every single time while I hit. I always wanna make sure my paddle is up. Once again, when you hit, again, I'm gonna run. My paddle's up every single time when I hit and I come up to the kitchen. So you always wanna be coming up to the kitchen with your paddle like this you never wanna be coming up to the kitchen with your paddle like this. This, you're gonna hit balls super close, super on the inside, and you're gonna pop the ball up. If you go like this, you're gonna be making contact more out in front, you're gonna be able to be more aggressive, and you're gonna be able to hit at a higher point and hit the ball down. And you can also change the positioning of your paddle while always keeping it out in front. And why don't you go into that, how your paddle positioning right. changes while I get that ball? So we're saying the paddle needs to always be out in front. If your paddle's ever this close to your body, you're gonna get jammed and you're gonna miss your shot because you're not gonna have the right positioning. Like you said, you wanna have it out in front. But if someone's hitting the ball down at my feet while I'm in transition or at the kitchen, I can still have my paddle down to defend that ball, but it's always gotta be out in front. If it's at my foot, I'm gonna miss again. You're so you when you're down here, you have more time. But every single time, if you're moving up and you need to come down, it's still out in front. It's not moving up like yeah. this tight in your body. <laughs> Tyler is talking to somebody. We're at our new lifetime in Lifetime Frisco. Shout out to Texas. We live here now, so it's all new and fun. But when you're moving up in transition, it's just really important to stop your feet before you hit your shot and to predict and anticipate where their ball is going to be coming out on your body. So if the ball is coming down because you hit a high ball, your paddle should be down but still out in front so you have the right position and body balance to hit your next shot back. Ready? Okay. Okay. So I told them about how when they're, if they're going to move their paddle to down because they hit a high ball and the next ball is coming low with them, it still needs to be out in front of your body. Okay. Is it recording? I think so. Okay. So what are we going into? Whatever's next. I mean, I briefly touched on how if you hit a high ball, you're going to need to put your paddle down, but it still needs to be out in front. That's what I said. So the first thing that you want to think about again is make sure with your feet. Feet first, you're stopping while your opponent makes contact. The second thing that you want to do is always make sure that your paddle is out in front and up. The last thing that you wanna do once you understand those two things is adjust your paddle position based upon where you are on at the court like you referenced. Mm -hmm. What you wanna do is the closer you are up to the kitchen, the higher you want your paddle. The further back I am to the baseline, the lower I want my paddle. The further I go back to the baseline, again, my paddle is going to drop down. Now, why is that? Well, why, Tyler and Michelle, well, why do you want your paddle down back here rather than up here? Why? Because you have more time back there. You have more time, and also, if I hit my paddle here and I make contact with a ball back here at this height, where's it gonna go? It's gonna go out every single time. So great rule of thumb not to hit out balls back at the baseline 
is keep your paddle down. And if the ball's any higher than your paddle, nine times out of 10, it is going long. So why don't we get all of these tips that you have your notepad out for right now, because we told you how valuable this information is, is to understand that every single shot in pickleball is dependent upon who you're playing and what kind of ball they're going to receive from you and what kind of shot is going to come back at you. So it, it's all dependent. That's the, the really fun thing about pickleball. Nothing is black and white. It's almost all gray. So everything depends on their weakness, your strength, your court positioning. But we're giving you some great tips here so that you become a better player in transition and that's going to immediately increase your level of play. Why don't you go back there and you hit me some balls, okay? okay. So I'm at the baseline. So where is my paddle? My paddle is going to be at the lowest position that it normally is. So my paddle is going to be here. Why is my paddle going to be here? Well, we just said before. If I have my paddle up here and I let the ball go, where is it going to go? It's going to go long. So my paddle is going to be back here because what types of shots is Michelle going to hit? She's going to hit balls that are going to bounce to me and hit. Hit a long one real quick so we can show them, right? So if you hit long and my paddle is down here, I'm going to let go because where is it going? It's going out. Now, the closer I get, the higher my paddle is going to be. So when I'm in the transition zone, it's going to be a bit higher than I normally am going to have because why? I'm gonna to have to take some out of the air. Maybe I'm going to have to take some on the hop. A big thing with the transition zone is you wanna make sure you drop your body down. You wanna sit into your legs when you hit. You don't wanna be standing straight up. So again, I wanna sit in my legs, have my paddle at medium height so I can block those balls back. And another massively important thing about where you're standing right now is 95% of these shots will be a reset or a drop in the kitchen. 100%. Hitting and driving transition is the devil's work. You really don't want to attack balls here unless they are, like he said initially, a ball you can run through because it's a pop-up floater and you can really attack the ball and put it away. If it's anywhere from the ground up to here, you have to reset those balls in the kitchen. And like he said, you want to use your legs to get your energy from the ground up to be that wall that's going to absorb everything and reset the ball so you can move your team up to the kitchen. And here's where we say having the paddle out in front is such a big deal. You cannot hit balls in the transition zone while you get jammed. No. You have to make sure if you're going to hit any balls on the short hop out in front, again, this is the most awkward place to hit, but this is the best way to get better in pickleball. And it's what separates beginners from advanced players is you need to make sure that you have your paddle out in front. So if I'm super here and I'm close, I'm going to pop the ball up every single time. Okay, that was a good one, but look, I'm going to eat the ball every single time. And right? as an offensive player, the best time to get someone is right there. That's my favorite and almost only way for me to beat Tyler in pickleball is to find him in transition and hit the ball right at his feet. So now watch this, right? So instead of being super close and like you said, get in my feet. Now, if I hit the ball, if I have my paddle out in front, now I'm not eating it in my feet. Now I'm making contact further out. Now, hopefully I can get those balls in, but you guys understand what I'm saying. If I have the paddle close, I'm getting the ball at my feet. If I have the paddle away, I'm not allowing the ball to come to my feet. I'm hitting the ball at a higher point if I let it bounce or if I take it out of the air. I don't want to be standing straight up. So again, I want to sit in my legs, have my paddle at medium height so I can block those balls back. And another massively important thing about where you're standing right now is 95% of these shots will be a reset or a drop in the kitchen. 100%. Hitting and driving transition is the devil's work. You really don't want to attack balls here unless they are, like he said initially, a ball you can run through because it's a pop-up floater and you can really attack the ball and put it away. If it's anywhere from the ground up to here, you have to reset those balls in the kitchen. And like he said, you want to use your legs to get your energy from the ground up to be that wall that's going to absorb everything and reset the ball so you can move your team up to the kitchen. And here's where we say having the paddle out in front is such a big deal. You cannot hit balls in the transition zone while you get jammed. No. You have to make sure if you're gonna hit any balls on the short hop out in front, again, this is the most awkward place to hit, but this is the best way to get better in pickleball. And it's what separates beginners from advanced players is you need to make sure that you have your paddle out in front. So if I'm super here and I'm close, I'm gonna pop the ball up every single time. Okay, that was a good one, but look, I'm gonna eat the ball every single time, And right? as an offensive player, the best time to get someone is right there. That's 
my favorite and almost only way for me to beat Tyler in pickleball is to find him in transition and hit the ball right at his feet. So now, watch this, right? So instead of being super close and like you said, get in my feet, now if I hit the ball, if I have my paddle out in front, now I'm not eating it in my feet. Now I'm making contact further out. Now hopefully I can get those balls in. But you guys understand what I'm saying. If I have the paddle close, I'm getting the ball at my feet. If I have the paddle away, I'm not allowing the ball to come to my feet. I'm hitting the ball at a higher point if I let it bounce or if I take it out of the air. Now, the next thing, and if you want to maybe move the camera up, the closer I get to the kitchen, the higher I want my paddle to be. Why? Because nine times out of 10, I'm going to have to hit a ball at a higher height over the net. So I went my paddle up and out in front. The next thing, I want my paddle tip pointing up. I don't want my paddle tip pointing down. I want my paddle tip pointing up and I want it to be here. So again, back at the baseline, I want it down here. Up in the transition zone, I want it around here. Up at the kitchen, I want it up here. So the further I get up to the kitchen or when I get to the kitchen, the higher I want my paddle to be. So when we're up at the kitchen, let's do it. We're gonna go back and forth now and we're gonna have our hands up and out in front every single time. So I'm here, up and down front. Cause if I hit a ball here, look, I hit it in the air. Or if we dink it, now she can drop her paddle down and hit it like that. Now, well, Tyler, why, or Tyler and Michelle, why do you want your paddle up and you don't want your paddle down because they're going to dink it? Because volleys are going to come way faster than dinks. Volleys are going to come way faster than dinks. So you want to make sure that your paddle's up so you can get those faster shots for the volleys rather than dinks where your paddle can go down and you have time. And we talked about anticipation and recognizing what kind of shot is supposed to be coming back at you. So if I know I hit a great dink and it bounces in the kitchen and Tyler's going to have to dink that shot back, he's not going to get a volley because the only way he can volley the ball is if the ball's around his chest or waist level. So if you can anticipate what kind of shot you're gonna get back, you'll be able to move your paddle more efficiently. So like he said, your ready position's up here, but if you need a dink, you should prepare down here for what's to come. So here we are, look, look how much time we have for the dinks. Look, I can drop my paddle down for the dinks. Drop my paddle down. Whenever I drop my paddle down, where is the ball going to go? The ball's going to go up. Now we're gonna hit it in the air. Look, our paddles are up, so we're ready for that shot. We don't have time, right? So that's why you want to keep your paddle up in the air. And you're always looking to take these volleys here. Like if you watched our last video, we talked about shrinking the kitchen. You're looking for these volleys to take out the air. But if your opponents are hitting you good dinks, you're gonna be able to recognize that and move your paddle in the correct way to prepare for your next shot. And remember, it takes way more time to go from here to here and then keep your paddle out here and just hit right away. Yeah, and if, if anything, you want to protect yourself from getting body bagged from a volley first. So it's like step one, prepare to defend yourself. If you see a dings coming, you have time to go like this. So make sure again, you're stopping and setting up to the kitchen. You're not running through it unless it's a high ball. Then once you understand that, you're going to try to keep your paddle up and out in front the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, you're going to work on positioning your paddle in the proper place. And the most important part of this whole video is we did talk about what you need to do as an individual player, but as a team, you have to move together. And now let's get into that. Yes. So here's a big thing. A lot of beginner players do this wrong. Where is the best place to be in pickleball while you're playing? playing? It's up at the kitchen, right? So here's what's gonna happen. This is, you can explain what happened before. I, I think what we should do before we do that is I think we should set up like we're playing an actual match. Cause a lot of people, they don't take lessons. They don't get into a clinic initially. They're just gonna go out and play pickleball. Unless you're a universal rackets clinic. Right, but I'm just saying uh, most people don't have all the, there's no way everyone can have all the information when they first start playing. So you go out and you play a match, right? So say we're serving, mm -hmm. we're serving. We're both here at the baseline and pickleball has all these random rules to make the game more fun and to last longer. So we're both here back at the baseline. Tyler serves the ball first and I'm on the left side. After he serves the ball, they're gonna return and then we have to hit a third shot. Typically, Tyler, I think you're like 50% drive, 50% drop. So say he drops the ball for the third shot. We need to together analyze his third shot drop. So say his third shot drop is a high, not a great drop. 
we both need to recognize that together and not sprint up to the kitchen like we talked about initially. We see the balls high, so we say, watch, stay, we're communicating together. We might take one step in, but stop. Because like we said also initially, you need to stop your body on the court wherever you are when your opponent makes contact with the ball. Yes. And that saves you time, and that's going to get you in a great position, and that's really going to change your game, so I hope you write that down. And you know, that's a great point, Michelle. Maybe we should talk about that as an individual before we talk about as a partner. Yeah. So the only time that you want to move up in pickleball is when it's a good shot. If you don't hit a good shot, the point's not over, but you have to stay back. Yeah. A lot of players, what they do at a recreational level, they'll pop the ball up in the air and then they'll run up. And nine times out of 10, the point's always going to be over. Why? Because they're not going to be able to get the ball back. But if you see in high level pickleball, pro pickleball, what do they do? They pop the ball up and the point still goes. They don't easily win the point. The point's probably extended another 10 shots. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because after they pop the ball up, yes, they're pros and yes, they have better shots, but they stay back and they position themselves in a place to get the ball back. So why don't we do that? You'll go over there real quick. And I want you to see when a good ball is hit, I move up. When a bad ball is hit, I stay back. So we're gonna play out a couple points, and this is a great drill to do. You're gonna feed it in, the net person always feeds it in. I hit my shot, and based upon, you're gonna feed the ball in. Oh, sorry. And I hit my shot, and based upon the shot that I hit, I'm going to either move up or stay back. So let's go, here we are. Okay. Okay, so what did I do with that point? The first shot, I hit a really good drop, so I moved up. The second shot, I popped the ball up in the air a little bit. I thought Michelle was gonna be aggressive with it, so I stayed back. I didn't move up after that shot. Something that we can go by quickly by accident because we've been playing for so long is how to know when you hit a good drop. A lot of people don't know this. A a great drop is one that lands in the kitchen and I cannot volley out of the air. That's what you're looking for for drops and dings, is to force the ball to be bounced in the kitchen so they can't volley it out of the air. Yes. A bad drop is obviously a when high When you one. pop the ball up in the air. But so the middle and, of the road is one that I take out of the air that isn't super high. And here's the thing, right? I thought I hit Michelle a bad shot and I still won the point. And that's going to happen a couple times to you guys. You guys are going to play. How many times have you Even missed? Even these. And how, yeah, oh, wait, <laughs> like I in the beginning, unless we crop it out. <laughs> how many times have you guys missed an easy ball? You guys missed an easy ball many times. But here's the thing. I'm here. She's going to hit the ball in the net. But if she doesn't hit the ball in the net, I have the best chance of prolonging the point. I like to say, again, you hit a good shot, you move up. You hit a mediocre shot, you stay. You hit a really bad shot, you move back. Right. And also think about it. If he's in the middle of transition, compared to running up to the kitchen, he's got about two more seconds to defend the ball that I'm gonna put at his feet, hopefully. So he's given himself more time by being a smarter player. Let's do two more real quick, all right? Okay. So here we are. So you feed it in, right? Oh yeah. Here we are. Stopping a contact. Here we are, now I'm up at the kitchen and I win the point. There you go. Or I'm in the best chance to win the point, even if she wins the point. One now, more. what did I go wrong? And this is because we haven't been drilling a ton. Hopefully we're super excited. We're going to start drilling again. Is what did I do? I had my paddle close to my body. I need to watch this video because that's my number one thing that separates me from being really good and really bad is keeping the paddle up and out in front. All right, let's do it again. Here we are. Okay, that's a good one. I move up. Okay, another good one. I move up. Good, and now we play out the point and anything goes. Now, a big thing for myself at a higher level when I was playing that 5-0 pro tournament is what? What did Zach tell me? He said, Tyler, you got to trust in your drop. Mm -hmm. What I do, stay back there, is this is what I do, and this is for a more advanced level. It was when I was playing a pro tournament, but I'll hit a drop. Is it in? Okay, it's good. Now I'm going to move up and look. Look where I make contact here, okay? What do the pros do? Zach literally would get up in one second. And he goes, Tyler, you're, you're, you're not really like old and slow. He's like, Tyler, you're kind of fast. Like how the H-E double hockey sticks do you not get up the kitchen? The reason why, again, let me do it one more time. Okay, here we are. I'll hit a drop. Is it good? Oh, yes, it is. And now here, look, I'm like right here. Okay, I can run pretty fast. Now I'm going to show you how to do it, right? Instead of hitting a drop trying to see, what am I going to do? Trust in my drop. Look where I am. 
It's a huge one more, difference. one more. Let me show you. We gotta do a short video on this. This is huge, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna watch. Trust in my drop here. It is night and day. Yeah. It is winning a point and it's not winning a point. And it's being a 4-0 and being a 5-0. It is huge. Forget even winning the point. How much easier is it to hit a shot from here for your next shot compared to a shot here, here, yeah. and then here? So and this is all different levels. Guys, stuff, here, here's the thing. It's a huge difference. When did I learn that? Like maybe four months ago? Yeah. Like so, and I've been playing forever. So it's different things work for different people. And that's why like one size does not fit all. And we invite you to try all the different tips. Now, the Hold next on. thing. And being, let me just give a disclaimer. We're not saying hit a drop and sprint up to the kitchen because people are like, well, you told me to trust my drop and run up to the kitchen. Well, what Take am I? Take everything in context. Yes. Oh, thank today. you. Yeah. And okay. what did we say? You want to stop while your opponent makes contact. Right. So you want to run up while your drop is going. You want to stop while your opponent makes contact. Right. And we're exaggerating, but we're showing different aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. And if you comment that you don't like it or something, that's amazing because they'll just give us more engagement. And that's perfectly fine. All right. So moving All right, sorry. on to All right. the point. So wait, wait, wait. Now, next thing, though, is if it's a high drop and I'm going to feel that, I'm going to stay back. So go back there real quick. I want to show one more thing. So again, here's the thing, right? If I hit a good shot, what am I going to do? I'm going to move up. <laughs> Let's try that again. Take two. If I had a good shot, what am I going to do? I'm going to move up and I'm going to set while my opponent makes contact. If I hit a neutral shot, maybe I'm in a transition zone. I give Michelle, I know she's not going to kill me. She's not coming from high to low, but she's coming maybe for a diagonal and down. Watch what I'm going to do. I hit a diagonal shot, right? Here we are. Watch what's going to happen. Here we are. I'm going to stay and I'm gonna get balls back. Again, I hit a neutral shot, I'm gonna stay, and I'm gonna get balls back. I'm gonna stay, look, okay, still not a good shot. Still not a good shot. Okay, look, now, okay, that's a, no, she's gonna take it out of here. Okay, that's a good ah. shot, right? So, if Dude, it's a ball that like neutralizes her, she can't hurt me, but she's gonna do something aggressive, I'm gonna stay. If it's a good shot, what am I gonna do again? If it's a good shot, I'm gonna come in, and then we're gonna play. If it's a high shot, watch what I'm gonna do. If I hit a high shot, I know she's gonna come down, be super aggressive. And this was why I said before, this is why the pros prolong the points, is watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move back to have another chance to get the ball in. Once again, if it's a high shot, watch what am I going to do? Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move back to give myself more time. And I'm gonna stay back until I get the ball in. <laughs> and hopefully win the point and not get body bagged. Sorry, babe. I felt your intensity. That's going to leave a mark. <laughs> Just you, give yourself you, a kiss. You kiss it. What are you, All my right. son? So, yeah. Like, our son ran into a wall <laughs> this weekend, did like five face plants, <laughs> jumped off his, his uh, electric car for fun. Like, he's like, While hey. Santa was still driving it. I'm just going to like being drug along. hurt myself. Yeah. So. But that's the thing. So if it's a good shot, you're going to move up. If it's a neutral shot, you're going to stay there. And if it's a really, really high shot that you're absolutely dead, you're going to stay back. Right. And so the whole way we even got into this discussion was I talked about a standard match and a standard game. So we talked about Tyler's third shot. So take everything we just said and put that into your game, but use it with your partner. We need you to understand that with your partner together. Because if I'm doing the right thing and he's doing the wrong thing, you're still going to lose the point every single time. Because one person up and one person back has a hole in the court. Now, the next thing, time, patience, time, more patience. What did I do? Okay, you body bagged me. You ended up winning that point. But I popped the ball up in there. I hit it back. I hit it back. I stayed back. I hit it back. I stayed back. Mm -hmm. Then I hit one really cool. It was like a backhand drop on the run. I realized that I hit a good shot, and then what did I do? Moved up. I moved up. So you stay in your position until you hit a good ball. So if I hit a super high ball, it's going to be really difficult for me to hit a good offensive shot off of a high ball. I'm going to probably need a couple of tries, and that's or okay. I might not. And that's okay. There's no pressure. So I'm going to stay back, pop the ball up, pop the ball up, pop the ball up. I'm going to pop the ball up for 50 times until my opponent ends the point, or until what? I get a ball in the kitchen, and then I'm going to move up. If I hit a neutral ball, okay, I'm here, right? We're, we're up here. 
and I hit it. Here we are. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. Okay. Then I pop the ball up. Then I'm going to move back. Okay. Guess what? I get the ball in. Neutral, neutral. Okay. Finally, I get an opportunity. Then I'm going to come up. And it can be 50 shots until you get up to the kitchen. And you're going to, it's kind of like a red light, green light, yellow light. People talk about this with balls to attack and balls not to attack, but it could also work in transition for you as well. And you're going to just wait with your partner as a wall until you get your green light to move up. And it's okay if you pop the ball up, like he said, the best way to defend a high ball is to put your paddle down and to get into the correct position. And for the last part is we need to make sure that we're going up together and it's okay to hit the ball up super high. Like even give them a lob if you're totally off balance, lob with intention, but a lob is so much better than a perfect shot attempt that lands into the net. Because when the ball lands into the net, the point is automatically done. Now, the only, uh, what, what's the word? The only um, caveat caveat to this is when you hit a drive. Go up to the kitchen. When you hit a drive, the faster you hit the ball, the faster it's going to come back. Players, they say, oh, I'm not fast enough. I'm not strong enough. Every single time my opponent hits too good of a shot. The reason why is because you're not anticipating your drive. Just like you anticipate a good drop to go up, watch. Whenever you hit a drive, you have to expect a short reply. Once again, if you want to be twice as fast, if you want to get to two times more balls, when you play pickleball, when you hit a drive, you have to expect a short reply. So what are you going to do after you hit a drive? You're going to move up. Now, Tyler, you told me to set before. What in the world are you talking about? Comment, comment, comment. This is horrible. And the channel, thumbs down, unsubscribe. I'm not subscribing. Get a new camera angle. Turn the camera that way. Quit pickleball. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to stop while your opponent hits. And that is way, 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 way easier said than done. So here we are. You want to see what Tyler does? Here we are. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to drive in the net. That's, that's the first thing, of course, okay? The second thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to drive and stay back here because what can your opponent do? They can either smash it at you or they can hit super short. Let's so, show a short one, okay? Here we are. So I'm going to drive the ball and they're just going to go like that and I can't get to the ball. What do I need to do? I need to drive the ball and after I drive it, I need to expect a shorter reply so I can go up to the kitchen. Once again, after I drive it, I need to expect a shorter reply so I can go up to the kitchen. And what is the best thing to do with your short reply? You want to make sure. What do you do with my short reply? You tell me. What is me. your fifth drop? Or your, you I tell me. the answer. You drive and then your fifth shot's a drop. So it's called the drive drop. Because if I'm giving him a short low ball, you can't drive that because that's surely going into the net. Yes. So you hit a drive, I hit a short reply, and then you hit a fifth shot drop. And it's way easier to hit a drop shot in the middle of transition than at the baseline. And that's a great play. And that's Annalise's play. And why I, she wins. I don't wins, know if it's like, still her play, but you see her play. Every drive, single drop. tournament. Yes. And, and here's a big thing. So this is where I go wrong Hi. because I come from Sorry. tennis and I have a huge ego. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drive. Oh! And then she's going to smash it at me and Michelle always does that. She it's says that's my weakness. It's rare that you're going to hit two weakness. drives unless you're at a low, low level. And people don't know how to Once you get to a, a certain higher level, that's not going to win. All right, so what you gotta do though is you need to hit, and then when they make contact, you're gonna set. Paddle in front, Tyler, come on. And then you're gonna move up to the kitchen, and Ooh. then you're gonna hopefully win the point just like that. So that's a big thing. When you drive, you need to run up, and then and you still need to next. set while your opponent makes contact. And that's why we waited this long to give you this tip and this tactic, because the first thing, what did we teach? You gotta set. The second thing, what did you have to do? Have your paddle up. The third thing, then you move with your paddle. Once you get that stuff, it's like you got to crawl before you walk, and then you walk before you run, and then you run Turn before you sprint. It's the exact same thing. We're beginning. starting from the beginning, and then we're going up. We couldn't have told you this tip at first, because if we told you this tip at first, you would be commenting, what the heck, what are you telling us, because you didn't tell us how to crawl before you walk. Should we give walk. them one bonus off the drive? Sure, why not? How about the shake and bake? Okay. So this Go is a for really it. fun drive. Uh, play. So Tyler drives the ball at the opponent we're playing together. Tyler drives the ball and then I am anticipating that he's going to drive so we're going to get in tight and we're looking for a pop-up off of this drive. Yes. It's not a low short reply because you know that he can really knock them out with his drive. Yeah. And then I come in and I poach it and I put the ball away. And that's what Ryan or Shire was so good at. shake and bake himself. Gabby, my women's partner, used to shake and bake herself all the time. It's pretty funny. After playing with him, all I hear in my uh, head is good and tight, good and tight, good yeah. and tight, good and tight, good and tight. Because you're looking to anticipate the pop-up. Yeah. If it's not a pop-up, 
then what are you doing? Hitting a drop to get back to the kitchen. 100%. So that's really big. Now we spoke about how to move with yourself. We're going to touch into how to move with your partner. Now here's the thing. Even if your partner isn't doing the proper thing, you should be doing the proper thing. And hopefully your partner will follow you. Maybe your partner after this, they're going to look to you for advice because you're going to be such a pickleball savant. Or what are they going to do? They're just going to be in the wrong position, but you're going to be in the right position. You know what I did actually when I was talking about this? And, what? And um, the person I was playing with is a really nice guy. Um, and you go out there all the time at open play. You're playing with strangers. You just met them. And it's funny because my brother started playing pickleball with his girlfriend and they literally refuse to play with anyone but themselves. But I know they will one day. And when you're out there playing with people or having a partner of someone that you don't know, it's so important that you communicate. Um, so the guy that I was playing with, there was a couple times that there was a hole in the middle. That's because he was back and I was up or I was back and he was up. So I was like, just move with me. That's what I said. I was like, I don't know if I sound bossy or not, but I wanted to win. It's kind of cute. And I, and I was, I was trying to be very respectful about it. I was like, we just got to move together. So here's the thing. <laughs> I feel like, like when you learn math in school, and then it's like you learn a new chapter and it's like, oh my gosh, that, that looks so difficult. There's all these numbers. But then it's like, yeah, it kind of reverts to the same basic math that you had at first. It's court positioning. You know? Okay, so here's the thing. This isn't this crazy new equation that we're going to teach you or something. It's literally going to be what you did, but now you're going to have your partner do it. So this type of movement, it's the same exact thing for the most part by yourself except except now instead of just doing it by yourself you're going to pretend that you and your partner have a rope tied to each other so what that means is now okay if a shot's good what is michelle and i going to do we're going to move up if a shot's bad what are we going to do we're going to move back if a shot's neutral what are we going to do we're going to stand here same thing once again same exact thing michelle and i both do that and look this is how much space we have when we have our paddles out like put your your paddle out. We have this much court to cover. Now there's a little bit on his side. There's a little bit on my side. And We're now how do we deal with that? The court. If he has to move to the line, I move to his side. So you want to follow the ball. So if we hit to the right, where are we going to go? If I hit over here, I'm going to cover middle. Michelle's going to go out wide. If we hit to the left, I'm going to go out wide. Michelle's going to go into the middle. So you always want to, again, you don't want this rope super like elastic there has to be some give that when i go here what's going to happen you're going to come here whenever you go there i'm going to get tugged to over there and as well this is something i feel like is, is huge and i feel like we've been doing this a lot more i've been doing it more i don't know i feel like i've been doing this more in my games and i think this will help a ton of you guys so when we're returning the ball so that team's serving to us and tyler's at the kitchen well, I, I'm at the kitchen and Tyler's hitting the return. I'm already where I want to be, but there's still this big hole we talked about that they can put the ball up the middle. He needs to meet me at the kitchen because it's not typical to have to move back off of the kitchen on the return. So here's what happens. We talked about following the ball, right? So say the ball gets served to Tyler and then he hits his return. The third shot, if, if he returns there, I'm sliding over to the middle. So if Tyler's return goes straight ahead, I need to cover this middle because this cross court is a very low percentage and he still has all that time that he needs to get up. So I have to cover my partner there until he can meet me to move with me. And that's a big thing. And that's something I feel like we struggle with sometimes. Yeah. And I feel like I finally just started getting it. Because like middle balls, nine times out of 10, if we have a middle ball, I love my back and I love my forehand. I'm going to take that ball every single time. Yeah. So if we're both up at the kitchen, here we are, come here. If we have a high ball in the middle, I'm taking middle going big. If you're over here, of course I'm taking middle and going big because we're just a mi partner. mixed doubles partner, okay? But, usually but here's the thing the though. Here's what happens middle. though. Here's what happens though, okay? Michelle's here. Michelle knows not to take my middle balls because I am such a mm. mean pickleball coach. I don't know why it I'm being so sensitive in this video today, but <laughs> you're up here, right? And Michelle knows not to dare touch the middle of the ball, that middle high ball, right? So here's what's gonna happen, okay? I'm gonna hit in the middle, right? Or I'm gonna hit down the line or wherever, probably down this the line. This is the return of okay, serve. Okay, here we are, I'm gonna return my serve. So Ready? here we are, I'll ready? Here we are, boom, I'm gonna return my serve. Here we are, right? They're gonna go in the middle. I'm still running up. Michelle knows sure is H-E double hockey sticks not to hit that middle ball. So then what's gonna happen? She's not gonna hit the middle ball because she knows I'm gonna like, I get really mad at her now, right though. so what's going to happen i'm not up 
So then I'm not going to be able to get the ball. And then the ball is going to go in the middle, and I'm going to be like, what the heck are you talking about? I'm like, like should why? I have taken that? And then I'm going to be like, why the heck didn't you get that, Michelle? And you're going to be like, because you never tell me to get those balls. And I'm going to be like, what the heck are you doing? And then we're going to lose point, get mad at each other, and then get divorced. Probably going to walk home, and then she's going to, I don't even know, okay? But wait a second. But That's here's what you got to do. Okay, here's what you got to do, okay? <laughs> when your opponent is coming or your partner is coming up to the kitchen, if they're not all the way up at the kitchen and set, so it doesn't matter if I'm here and running, if I'm still moving, if I'm not set waiting at the kitchen, who's going to take the ball at the middle? You. I have Even to. if it's over here, go There's over no here. Choice. Same thing, unless the ball's floating. But if your opponent hits a good shot and I hit my return, here we are, and I'm coming up to the middle, who's going to take that ball at the middle? You. I have to. Every Even if I have to come single over here. time. And again, this On happened with side. us every single time. And especially if you're playing doubles with your significant other, it is really difficult sometimes. They call it divorce doubles for a reason. And this is something that'll easily stop you guys bickering because you're going to go, like, wait, you were supposed to get it. No, you were supposed to get it. It's very so. In the better position? Whoever is up at the kitchen should take the middle balls. And that's a general rule of thumb. If Michelle's back here, you're back here, and I'm up at the kitchen set, even if the ball is floating, I'm taking this ball. I don't care if it's a backhand. I don't care what it is. I'm going to come over and take that backhand shot. You're not a ball hog. It's not because it's because you are in the best position because whenever you are up at the kitchen, you are in the best place to win in pickleball. Right. And you can really get into strategy here about where you should hit your returns. What, where, who has the weaker third shot drop or drive? Where do you want to put the ball on your return when you're returning the serve? But at the end of the day, you just need to make sure to go back to your notes, like we said, and look and see who is in the better position and where is the ball, and you follow the ball. So if his return goes over there, I'm moving my body to the ball. I'm ready for the ball. If it's over here, I'm going to come to his side of the court because someone needs to cover a majority of the court or you will get beat every single time. Follow the ball. Be the ball. See the ball. Follow the ball. Go to the ball. And the last thing I'm going to say is make sure always your paddle goes to wherever your ball goes. I feel like we kind of missed upon that. We can maybe touch on that. Is whenever I'm up in the kitchen, yourself or your partner, you don't just want your body, but you want your paddle going there. So why don't you dink with me real quick and let's show them. This is one thing that I feel like we could have added before. It's, it's still okay. Is that watch, okay? So if we're dinking, we're in a dink rally right now. We're dinking back and forth, watch. If I am going diagonal, watch where my paddle is gonna go. My paddle, is going to go diagonal to Michelle. So I'm going diagonal, watch. My paddle is going to go point to Michelle. My, paddle, my paddle's not here, my paddle's pointing towards my opponent. Again, my paddle's pointing towards my opponent every single time. Look, now let's go straight ahead, <laughs> run. Now my paddle's pointing over here towards my opponent. Okay, so I want the tip of my paddle pointing towards exactly where I want to hit the ball. So watch, if I go in the middle, I'm going to go in the middle, I'm going to do one in the middle, one out wide. One in the middle, now one out wide over here. One in the middle, now one out wide. Paddles over here. One in the middle, now one out wide. One in the middle, one out wide. Oh! Yes, good. That was such a weak, <laughs> flimsy, flimsy, Ernie. What well, was the wrong ball to But do that's it okay. With. But yeah, that's how you do it. And if you guys do this in all your games, you're gonna be so much better off. You're gonna probably Just not get as much points. mad as your pickleball partner. And you're gonna win more points. Yeah. If you guys wanna check out our awesome Selkirk gear, she has her amazing Ava Lee Selkirk sweatshirt on, user code INF-Universal. We have these amazing Selkirk paddles. I'm using the Halo Pro 14 millimeter XL. This amazing surface, it's a Kevlar surface. Absolutely awesome. Use our promo code INF-Universal. You're using the brand new Invicta Pro Vanguard. Absolutely amazing paddle. Doesn't only play good, amazing feel, amazing touch, but it looks really cool too. You have the checkered uh, and carbon there's a fiber new pattern. And coming out soon, the 007. Really? Can't wait for that. Shh, stay you didn't see Parento playing with it? Shh, shh. No, can't, can't mm. tell. I don't know. But if you guys want early access, make sure you use our code too on selkirk.com. Once again, INF-Universal. And if you guys like this video, please let us know in the comments below and give us some positive comments, okay? I've been checking on YouTube. We don't always check on YouTube as often as we do on our other social media platforms. 
But when I do, I've just been seeing tons of negativity. We're just trying to make amazing videos for you guys so you guys will improve. Make sure you click the link in the description, uh, www.universalrackets.com. If you want a corporate event, special event, if you want any type of pickleball event, make sure to click that link and fill out the form. And Universal Rackets representative will be getting back to you. Our next upcoming event, we're super excited. We're going to be doing an event in Fort Lauderdale with Lululemon, Lululemon corporate event. Shout out to Lululemon, one of the best athletic clothing brands there are. Absolutely love it. Got my Lulu shorts, Lulu, 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 everything. Absolutely amazing. So if you want a type of event, click the link, fill out the form, and we will see you guys next time on court.